a mixture of Chinese and Japanese philosophy for you today. First from Lao Tzu, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. My single step in this case was finding this radio link PPM or S bus to PWM converter. Now I've used something very similar before, I'll link to that up there. When I looked at this, uh, it has something that the other module does not have, and that is a six axis flight stabilization system built in. How they do it at this tiny size, I know not. So three axes accelerometer and three axes uh, gyroscope, and it can be selected into, I think, five different modes. When looking for a suitable airframe, I was wanting to make something small and manoeuvrable. Radio Link produced their own model, which is called the A560, but I thought that it was a little expensive for what it was, and I already had most of the components that I need. So I'm going to try building this Sakura, which is where the Japanese comes in. Sakura is the cherry blossom, the national flower of Japan. They say it heralds the time of renewal and optimism. Well, I could certainly do with some renewal and optimism right now. To partner the flight controller, if you will, I'm going to be using this tiny FR Sky compatible module. This is an eight channel device. And when I look at it, we have ground five volts and S bus, which spookily will line up exactly with the pins on the flight controller. I'm going to put it on it at 90 degrees. The flight controller module needs to sit in the model pointing towards the front and it must be level either that way or that way. Let's move on now and start putting it together. The first task described here is to insert the flat carbon pieces into the wings, the tail section, and also in the fuselage. So there is one top and bottom for the fuselage, two for the tail section. My glue of choice for these types of jobs these days is this Yuhu Poor. Just going to run a small amount along the slot. And simply push the rod in place. Let's hold that together for a few seconds. And then we can put it to one side. Again, just holding those pieces in place until the glue starts to take hold. I'm actually seeing gaps here, so I think I'm going to apply some very light pressure with some clamps. These little clamps with elastic bands on I bought many years ago. I haven't seen them since. It looks like it might be a, a good project for 3D printing. You can obviously adjust different pressures by putting more or less elastic bands on there. Now we can join the tail section to the main body. Just put some grease proof paper underneath there to stop the glue sticking to it. I'm going to weight that down with an old sealed acid battery and give that until tomorrow to set up. The next thing to do is to glue the two pieces together. Now take care when you're doing this not to break the rudder off. That would be very easy to do. There are these tabs which fit into corresponding slots and there's a tab on the top and a tab on the, on the bottom there. So I'm just going to apply some Yoohoo Pour. Now this comes into its own in this particular case because it gives you plenty of time to adjust things and make sure that everything is square. When the glue is drying, I'm going to put it on the edge of my table here with the square like this, with the little magnets on the other side, keeping everything at right angles. It's a little bit fiddly, but you get the idea. As you can see, I have it over the edge of the bench, the workbench here, weighted down with the battery. And now I'm just going to put my square at the highest point, and then just for these little neodymium magnets, hold that together. The little magnets aren't quite strong enough due to the thickness of the foam, so I have uh, a somewhat larger one. I'm 
that's perfect. Now it's time to fit the servos. It just so happens that the servos I have are about a millimetre or so wider than the slots. My weapon of choice for rectifying that issue is uh, this old electrically heated soldering iron, which I practically only ever use for modifying foam, shall we say. And now that fits in there nicely, nice and snug. And I've just added a little masking tape around the servo where I'm going to put the small amount of glue, just so that if I have to change them in the future, it'll be easier. There's another servo to go in the front here. The next part of the instructions just show how to install the control horns for the ailerons here, for the elevator, and pay attention when you're putting this one on because there is a slot on the other side. Clearly it goes on this side. And finally for the rudder here. It does say to glue these into place. I'm not sure that's strictly necessary. The keeper part on the other side fits really, really snugly, really well. But I have just taken the precaution of putting a dab of glue on the keeper there to stop it coming loose. The last part of the instructions are how to assemble and fit the control rods. Now I'm not going to do that at this point. All they are is this carbon rod heat shrinked to the end there. There is no provision for adjusting these. Therefore I think it's a very good idea to install the rest of the radio system first before committing to making those to length. And it's a similar arrangement for the elevator and the rudder. And that is all there is to the instructions. No description of how to fit the motor, no description of where best to put the, the radio gear. We've got the, the servo connections just hanging in space there. I guess we're going to have to figure that part out for ourselves. I've made a stab at the installation. The motor, I had to enlarge the gap at the front to accommodate. I've added the speed controller and checked that it's rotating the correct way. The flight controller, if you like, is stuck under the fuselage there and as I mentioned right at the beginning I've soldered directly the receiver module onto the flight controller and that's all bound up and, and working fine. The major mystery at this point is where is the centre of gravity? In the instructions here there is a rather cryptic note that says set the centre of gravity at the position that the manual already marked out. Well forgive me but if you can find where it marks out the centre of gravity on here, then you're a better person than I am. I don't see it indicated anywhere on the assembly guide or anywhere actually on the plane. Out of guess, this is our main wing spar, our carbon spar there. It will be a little bit aft of that point, somewhere around here I'm guessing. In fact, as she sits at the moment, it's around about level with my fingers here underneath. The battery pack I'm going to use to start out at least is a two cell 450 milliampere hour. There's nowhere that it can sit on the top of the, the wing because of the servos. And similarly on the, on the bottom, this servo here is kind of in the way. The only place I think will be maybe putting some Velcro on the fuselage here and as I say getting it balanced around about this point on the on the wing. Time now then to turn on the radio, get all the servos centered and check the throws of each of them then I can install the control rods. Having made sure that the servos are centered, setting up the push rods not too much of a problem. It's best I found to make sure that these Z bends in the wires are actually Z bends and as they come they're a little bit wonky as you can see in the photo. If you're lucky enough to have a pair of Z bend flyers then you can obviously use those. If not, back to basics. Note that the rod for the rudder is a little bit shorter. You will need to leave more of the wire hanging out and less of the heat shrink in that case. It's the opposite for the elevator control rod. That's a little bit overly long. I ended up having to cut maybe 10 millimeters off of the end of that, just using the wire cutter section on my pliers. With that now in place, let's just check things are set up correctly. Throttle disabled. Throttle 
you will have to wait for the flight controller to initialize and you need to keep the model still whilst it's doing that. I'll be going through the different modes that you can set the controller into in another video. At the moment it's in its manual mode. There's no flight stabilization enabled. Let's just check our control surfaces. Elevator. There's tons of movement on these surfaces. And finally the rudder left and right. So that's all correct. Quick throttle test. Throttle active. <laughs> That's plenty of thrust there. That really concludes the model build itself. As I say, there'll be follow-up videos on setting up the transmitter for the different five different flight modes. And of course, I'm still under lockdown, so I can't actually go and try and fly the thing. There'll be a follow-on video for that. Until then, keep safe.